What a matchup. And what a tee, Mike. Metro PCS and the iPhone SE for $0 on a network that covers 99% of people in the U.S. Oh, impressive. Play with the best. Switch to Metro PCS and an unlimited LTE plan and get a 32 gig iPhone SE for $0. Metro PCS. Coverage not available in some areas, plus sales tax. Claim based on talk and text. Not valid for active numbers currently on the T Mobile network or active on Metro PCS in the past 90 days. See store for details and terms and conditions. She's, she's like making the I don't want to have lunch with you, but you want to have lunch with me excuses. Like, oh my God, yes, it has been so long. <laughs> ah, text me. Do you still have my number? It's six, is the first one. <laughs> and you know the rest. You, yeah, you'll figure Facebook it out. From me. There. Fa- Facebook me. <laughs> I can What's ignore that. What's the easiest thing to ignore? Mail me a letter. Mail me a letter. <laughs> so. If you didn't want to go to lunch, but whatever you like. <laughs> God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because all the other shit the voices in my head tell me to do is illegal. I'm your host, Noah Illusions, and sitting to my immediate left is my good friend, Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Thanks, Noah. Uh, you know what's the uh, capital of Nigeria? What, what is the capital? It's Abuja. Interesting. Sometimes I just do trivia here. <laughs> and sitting Abuja. 81 miles to my right is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? Uh, other fun fact, they all smell different. <laughs> <laughs> I balanced out heats. I balanced out heats. Yeah. Is that <laughs> remorse? Does tri- thing. Tri- trivia and racism cancel? Is that? <laughs> Absolutely. All you right. ever go to a racism night at your local bar? <laughs> He's Irish. Of I go to Irish courses. bars all yeah. the time. Yeah. <laughs> it's all the nights that aren't trivia nights. <laughs> now, listen, hear me out. This is all I'm saying. All I'm saying. <laughs> all right. Well, now that half of the audience is still here, we can... Uh, this movie's yeah. from Africa. <laughs> yeah, this is just, it's probably just going to get worse from here. Yeah. So tell us, Heath, what African movie will we be breaking down today? We watched... Revenge of the Vultures, disc one, the movie. <laughs> it's part five of Nollywood's franchise juggernaut, the Vultures of Horror series. This one's about voodoo car bombs, mm-hmm. magical roofie spells, and yep. bird laser blood cancer, I think. <laughs> As you'd expect. And Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you love Super Nintendo, but you hate being able to understand any of the words in the movie you're watching, you <laughs> wrote this movie. You wrote it. Probably- <laughs> you made this movie. Yeah. How's it going? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that. Thanks for that. All right. Well, as, as Heath said, this is our fifth installment of the Vulture series. And one of the things I love about doing these movies, other than the movies themselves, is that it, it gives me a chance to recycle shit from the old intro. So in the interest of once more doing the same opening I used with the last two, I have a series of categories here, and I want you guys to tell me where this movie ranks compared to the other four we've seen. So uh, where would you say this one ranks in terms of kick-ass vulture magic? Ooh, uh, I'm going to go with second or third. We didn't have that sweet chair telepathy that we've had from Mm -hmm. previous movies, but we do (laughs) have skeleton dust (laughs) pass-off something <laughs> yeah. hockey air hockey i think yeah uh-huh. somewhere in the middle yeah there's only a couple of those like um vulture like ladysmith moments so. yeah <laughs> like middle it was a, it was a bit disappointing there yeah i think after the floating chair thing it's going to be really hard to impress us but that doesn't mean you have to stop trying all right where would you say i ranked in terms of fake ass weeping oh first place first place 100 first place i'm going to mention this when we get to it but I'm pretty sure they just found a bunch of people in their town weeping over something else. And they were just like, (laughs) what are you doing? Nothing. Don't worry about it. We're just all setting up my 1996 camcorder. (laughs) So hope I don't run out of tapes. Yeah. Don't worry about microphones. We don't really need them. Yeah. So first in real ass weeping too. Oh yeah. yeah, Right. Right. (laughs) Perhaps. Yeah. All right. So where would you say it ranks in terms of forgotten plot lines? Uh, 
Yeah, I'm not sure what first and last would mean. Uh, <laughs> it's bad. They're all bad. They do that. <laughs> I spent this whole movie going like, what the fuck ever happened to Quinn's beauty contest? <laughs> oh, the things we know. <laughs> the things we know versus the things we don't know that we could have been learning in the time that we know the things we know about Quinn's beauty contest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. All right, I got two more categories here. Uh, where would this uh, rank for you guys in terms of wacky elder hats? First place. <laughs> 100%. First place. They're messing with us. There was a bet this time. There was us. somebody made a bet. There's like Kentucky Derby hats and like <laughs> Easter parade hats. It's fucking crazy. Well, it's been a theme of this movie. Whenever we see the elders council, everybody has to wear a different wacky hat. But at one point in this movie, we see 20 some people all wearing different wacky hats. There's no way that was an accident. A, a coincidence. I can't buy it. All right. And then this is a late addition for me. Last one. Where does it rank in terms of use of CGI skeletons? Ooh, second place because no one tries to rape one. Right, right. Yeah, it's really hard to get first in this category. Yeah, in fact, the only skeleton I remember attacks a rapist, right? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. First it's or last, whichever is good <laughs> or bad. I don't know. I got to say, it ranks third for me. The, the lady with the two skeletons are atta attacking her from the very first one. Um, that's Ooh. still right up there for me. So I forgot about those. Skeletons. Yeah, no, this movie has a long oh, tradition yeah. of terrible CGI they do those, skeletons. Like, football drill, like yes. roll under, jump over thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Look like the bad guys rising up out of the ground in Twilight Princess or something. Yeah. Um, and is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Uh, yeah, uh, a couple of things. I'm going to say best worst, unjustified dramatic reaction to completely mundane words. It's. <laughs> One of those words is collateral. Somebody says yes. collateral in a completely normal scenario and everybody panics like a lady <laughs> faints, glass breaks in the background for no reason. It's crazy. There's literally an organ strike. There's yeah. literally a dun, dun, dun that goes with it at that moment. Yeah. yeah. This movie is a lot of things. Subtle, not one of them. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no one accused him of subtlety. <laughs> uh, my, my other nomination is best, 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 best Best evil magic chanting. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to say another word about that. We're going to get there pretty much right away. It's fantastic. I, I was going to say best worst magical scat, but then, then I remembered Eli's haunted turd act, and I feel, felt like... Uh, okay, rude. I'm not sharing other parts of my life with you anymore. I'm told it's <laughs> beautiful and brave. <laughs> Raising but awareness about irritable bowel syndrome, which over one <laughs> in 800 Americans has. I'm sure. I don't want to get political sure. on the show. I'm tired of it. Who told you it was Tired beautiful of. and brave? <laughs> Me. <laughs> uh, can I nominate this for best, best chicken fight? <laughs> <laughs> there, uh, there may be a, a chicken fight, like a, a legitimate, like, emotional arc having denouement containing chicken fight in the background of this film. <laughs> This, this this series has a long and proud tradition of street chickens. I didn't even bother to put that on the ranks list because I think we all know this one ranks first. In, Absolutely. In street chickens. All right. And I just had best worst reveling in how wacky mentally ill people are. So if you've been listening along for all of these, you know that in the last one, one of the antagonist characters got attacked by a vulture and was turned insane. In this movie, we revisit him while he's just rambling insanely. And they play this for comedy for like eight minutes. This movie, these series of movies could just be called Unfortunate Things That Happen in Africa explained by witches it's just like oh don't know where your daughter is witches go crazy witches weird foot thing witches yep. vultures of horror yep we have access to cameras but not the information those cameras could show us apparently not all right well of course as soon as he said vultures the auto tuning started to play in my head so we're going to milk that anticipation a little bit longer while we take a quick break and when we come back we'll dive into all the batshit nigerian insanity that is revenge of the vultures disc one hey folks 
As I'm sure you know, the whole crew is heading down to North Carolina for ReasonCon this weekend for a live record with Thomas Smith of Opening Arguments and Serious Inquiries Only fame. And as you might have picked up on, we had a bit of trouble with the travel arrangements. It's April. That's perfect chariot weather, guys. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately for us, Eli booked the trip using a, a map from the 1700s and a handful of seer stones. So the trip's going to include, like, bridgeless river crossings and a, a spot marked here there be dragons as i understand it and uh the facing of three challenges of the fire swamp but it did not have to be this way that's right okay the flame spurts make a noise to warn you uh, they, well they do they do but eli could have just used our new sponsor this week upside.com it's the best way to buy business travel not only do they book you troll riddle free trips, but you also save a ton of money and they give you an Amazon gift card worth one hundred, two hundred and even three hundred dollars every time. Yeah. And you know the difference between an Amazon gift card and money, right? Money has little kid germs on it. Yeah. Gross. That's right, Heath. It does. Look, if you're not a business traveler, you know someone who is. You have to tell them about Upside. They save a ton of money by bundling your fight and hotel together for one low price. Bundled pricing saves money, especially on business travel, so Upside can give you free Amazon gift cards. Okay, but I feel like having to bow hunt for quail along the way gives a business trip character. Yeah. Nope. Character. Nope, does not. So uh, if you're a frequent business traveler... The company saves a ton of money and you get thousands a year just for buying your air and hotel together on Upside. Plus, you still get all your miles. You'd be crazy not to check out Upside.com if you're shopping for business travel. It takes just three minutes to see how much you can save by getting your flights and hotel together for one low price. Man, you guys make it sound so easy to book business travel. It is easy, Eli. In fact, if you use our code BIZTRIP, that's B-I-Z-T-R-I-P, you're guaranteed to get at least a $200 Amazon gift card for your first trip. Our code BIZTRIP gets you a $200 Amazon gift card free. Save big on travel and get a big gift card every trip with Upside.com. Minimum purchase required. See site for complete details. Previously on Vultures of Horror. You, you might as well see the sound guy in the back glaring at him and fixing it throughout the rest of the scene. <laughs> right. I'm almost certain that the first half of the sentence was not in English. Nope, nothing happened. There's no plot to this movie. Yeah, but it is indecipherable. At this point, I wrote in my notes, tell me what the words in this scene are and I'll split my dick with a cowbell. <laughs> and then uh, we get... Pew, 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 for no, absolutely no reason. Just <laughs> yeah. throwing it in there. So now forget about those characters and everything that's happened up until this point of the, uh, in the movie because none of it will matter ever again. Question. Raping people with heat. <laughs> okay, but seriously, though, we should probably catch you up on the action. Once upon a time, there lived two brothers, Wutu and Kwame, and they came from a long line of evil, vulture-worshipping people from the cult of Chakra Kiki. Yep, that's where we're going to start from. Uh-huh, and uh, Kwame took after his family and used their evil vulture wizardry in a lifelong evil plot to become the village chief in a shithole town in Ghana. But Wutu, who looks like Kanye's latest tour was in a car crusher, rejected their evil voodoo and became a Christian instead. Kwame had three children, his daughter Quinn and his son Steve and... Superman. I, I have no idea, honestly, but the first time we saw him in the show, he was wearing a Superman shirt, and we've been calling him that for so long, he'll always be Superman to me. And all three of them, like their father, control evil magical powers, which allow them to call upon poorly CGI'd laser vultures and commune with a strange vegetable Satan hybrid bad guy thing. Quinn uses her powers to torment those that cross and or try to rape her. Her brothers use them to be poor and complain about things on porches a lot. They do, however, consider using their powers to get Superman laid by his on-again, off-again girlfriend, Rose. But Rose seems to fancy a young man from the city whose name can't really be a chew, but that's exactly what it sounds like. So we're going to go with it. 
Yeah. But perhaps the wickedest vulture wielder of them all is Kwame's wife, who uses her powers to moderately skew business towards her bodega at the local market by cursing her competition with an escalating, wily coyote-esque series of attacks that culminated in a debilitating case of oily foot disease. But Kwame's brother, Wutu, having rejected the laser vulture lifestyle, set out to build one of Nigeria's largest privately held companies where they produce... Meetings and big <laughs> business deals. Business deals meetings. is their primary. Indeed. Yeah. When he's not wheeling and dealing or arranging security for nuclear plants, Wutu <laughs> spends his time being complimented vociferously by any character he's on screen with or <laughs> was on screen with in the last scene. Yes. And also, <laughs> his name changes a lot. It's Wutu, it's Kutu. I, I have no fucking... Anyway. And now... The fifth installment of our hopefully never-ending series on the Vultures of Horror. Vultures of Horror. Vultures of Horror. And we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to start this one off with those laser sound effect fire credits that you love so much, and then it's straight to the auto-tuned VOH theme and I came. I really didn't have much need for seconds eight through thirty five hundred of this movie to be. I watched it anyway, but I was done. At this so point. true. And I just want to point out we we do get our fire credits here, but I I want to say the best movies have the screenwriter's phone number in the credits. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to do something else. I'd like to if you have anything other than vultures for me to do. We got to call these people at some point, right? Like we got to get one of them on Skype and just be like, so. <laughs> what's up <laughs> so right? why why do people get foot rot Wait, do you think it's because of, is it witchcraft do we think yeah yeah uh, the lighting <laughs> guy really wants us to call him to it really seems like the lighting guy is putting it out there you know he's got his like fucking tinder bio on there uh, <laughs> there's a continuity guy also i'm just saying is there that really? there's a guy who's in charge <laughs> Of continuity for this movie. Okay, put that white chicken back. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least now I know who I have to call to find out what the fuck happened about Quinn's uh, beauty contest here. I, I did enjoy the music. I love the music along with these credits each time. It's like MacGyver's just about to blast open the door and the theme right? with like a Game Boy and a potato and it's really exciting. And then they we get the Vulture's theme. It's we mm -hmm. didn't have Game Boys back in MacGyver's day. But yeah, yeah, no, but I get it. Um, and so we're going to start the movie off where the last one left off, which was with Superman um, getting beat up by his girlfriend's boyfriend. Yeah. And I never thought about this before, but demon vultures are a lot like force push, right? I mean, like, why would he now let himself get beat up? Solid, solid question. I also want to point out that we do get a slightly newer scene in this, which involves a woman carrying shit on her head through the shot, very clearly not giving a fuck that there was a movie being filmed. <laughs> Just like steps over his body like, I don't care. I don't care. I need to be there. <laughs> I also love uh, Heath's description of this scene more than just about anything I've ever seen. The uh, Black Waldo Red stealing <laughs> Rose from Black Waldo Blue. That's that, that's they're what's wearing happening. matching Waldo shirts in this scene, except one is red and one is blue. Yeah, with the popped collar. It's so fantastic, dude. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like a fucking fight game from the 80s. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you can't just press down kick and then use my character. This bullshit. <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> Yeah, so they have their little fight. We get the uh, the dick punch face slap from <laughs> wait from Red Waldo Black beating yes. up Blue Waldo Black. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, Eli, is this like is this like the racist version of Rock Paper Scissors you made up? <laughs> no, that, is this similar? From well, it's Black Guy Black Guy Paddle Feather. <laughs> okay, Vulture. Where is Dick Punch? Yeah, well, no, yeah, winner gets to dick punch, loser. That's, oh, okay. Yeah. So Black like, Guy always loses though. Like most of the games that Eli. Uh, makes up yeah so now we get one of the the constant challenges i have when we do the vultures of horror movies which is we do dialogue cues right so like the first guy that we i've said this before the first guy that watches the movie will write down like what line is being said at the beginning of this scene so we're all sort of synced in in our notes this time i just had to write 
Nothing I put here will quickly encapsulate how this scene starts. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. By the way, don't listen to Noah. By the way, we just three guys sit around a mic and we riff. We riff with our friends because we're funny. <laughs> we don't script anything. And that's how you podcast. That is how you podcast. That's, that's the key. Yeah. <laughs> Competition <laughs> eliminated. <laughs> So, but this scene is what we have is Superman and his brother doing some sort of Shakara Kiki summoning using I, Mel Torme words. Have you guys not heard of this spell? The blue hibbity boo hibbity do hibbity libbity ija hibbity libbity ija spell? I, I think this is the African version of row, row, row your belt. I think we just caught them in an acting warm up. <laughs> okay, so literally, I think I'm, I I believe that was a direct transliteration from Heath. The blue hibbity boo hibbity do yep. is actually how this scene starts off. Hibbity mm, hibbity, yeah, it's it's awesome. It's awesome. I, <laughs> like the the evil vulture tribe, they got to get tired of this at the beginning of everything. Like at a certain point, it's just like, great, yeah, hibbity hibbity, yeah. Can we just like plan the next blue foot thing? Hibbity hibbity, yeah. Like, can, can we hurry up? You skip past that. And so what they're doing is is they're they're doing a spell against the guy who stole Superman's girlfriend. I'm calling him Lex Luthor. I know his name's Atu, but I'm going to call him Lex. And when the hibbity-bibbity-bibbity stops, the words don't get less insane. Mm -mm. This is the exact line from Superman's brother, Steve, as he's talking to this voodoo doll. He says, you consider doing your own thing in a funky way and feeling like a big boy. Those are the exact <laughs> word sayings that happened. We should also point out that it's not like a straw voodoo doll. It's like that weird furniture that your your crazy sex uncle has around their house. <laughs> <laughs> you know, crazy sex uncle, like you go there and you're like, why do you have so much African stuff around your house? And then as a grown up, you're like, oh, it's because they were into weird sex stuff. That's what they're yelling. They're yelling at one of those statues you weren't allowed to touch because at some point it was inside your aunt. That is... <laughs> What's going I'm, on? I'm pretty sure it's a genuine Glasgow racist figurine. Yeah. <laughs> it's Glaswegian. It's if you if <laughs> culturally if you important. Just follow the three of us around for the last year constantly. That joke would be really fucking funny. <laughs> Which <to> you. <laughs> you should have. We are always podcasting. It is not our fault. There aren't always nights. <laughs> also, want to throw out there giant blown up Shocker Kiki poster. I have yet to receive a Shocker Kiki poster. It's, right. Uh, look. People have sent us 87 Carl the Pug of Pegacorns. I want one <laughs> Shocker Kiki poster. We're going to make it into our live tour shirt. It's going to be amazing. Get on your shit, people. Angelo made a cartoon, but I, I want I want the Shocker Kiki poster. Yeah, yes, I'm going to call them. <laughs> yeah, right. We got the number. Plus it's like two, <laughs> 700 other numbers. <laughs> It seems like they have a lot of stuff. Like, it's a pain in the ass. Like, that's a giant poster. Like, they have to roll it up at the end of each thing and set it up with the racist figure. Somebody has to bring a fern branch, like a really big fern yep. branch, mm -hmm. but just one of the... I want them to fight about it. Like, did you bring the fern? I brought the movie poster. You're on fern. <laughs> Come on. It's like those things you set up with magnets at trade fairs. Oh, fuck. It's not attaching. We need a new one of these. <laughs> And also, I, I want to point out how quickly the curses escalate here. This is like a fucking Facebook thread because Steve starts off and he goes like, you know, you are going to do your own thing in a funky way and be a big boy, but we will cut you down to size. And then Superman gets the doll and he's like, die, motherfucker. <laughs> I'm like, wow, that was quick. <laughs> It escalates. It escalates. Yeah. yeah. It's like letting me touch the planchette for a Ouija board. <laughs> As you stop, you're pushing it. See, I'm not. Eli, you're the only one touching it. K. E. Wait, what are you spelling? Uh, Reasoning time. <laughs> Also, this is where we get the first of, and we'll get plenty of these in the movies, the attempted unison cackle. <laughs> oh, they, it's so good. They <laughs> and they they fuck up on the evil Eunice yes, yes, and they eventually so just good. give up. It's like, Mwaha! no, 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 Mwaha! make eye contact. Uh, Sorry, uh, Mwaha. No, dude. Mwaha. Okay, <laughs> on three, ready? One, two, Mwaha. Mwaha. Go, Mwaha. go, go. Fuck three, it. two, one. <laughs> God damn it! Are we going on? Why go would it be Mwaha? on three? I mean, like one, two, three, and then we laugh. How could I be laughing one, while I'm saying two, three, four, Mwaha. four? You said four after two. <laughs> just what's happening? 
And what they do, the way they do this is one of them laughs, the other one laughs like he's trying to catch up, and then they both turn to the camera and wah-ha-ha off time with one another. And, like, I'm supposed to just carry on with my life. I'm supposed to just keep working and breathing <laughs> and whatnot after this happens. Yep. Holy shit. And, and apparently this is a fast-acting spell because now we're going to cut over to Rose's boyfriend's car just in time for a vulture to shit lasers on it. Yes. Yeah. I wrote in my notes, damn it, now the car has an extra life. This is definitely more of a power-up <laughs> graphic than a curse one. It was like the blue flashy uh, disco bowling ball Jar Jar Binks and the Gungans use. Yeah, exactly. well, yeah, kind of, kind of with a little less, uh, a little less opaque. But yeah, so, but yeah, I, I'm assuming he has a force field or super speed or an extra life. But no, apparently that shut his car off. And I love this moment. This is something that you only get in Vultures of Horror. Like they have to play like the car won't start, but they can't actually like he can't turn the keys because the car would then start. So he just jiggles them softly. <laughs> they have jingly keys for a whole different reason in these movies. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and and then he's he conveys to us by scratching his body that the car is getting hot. And he's, then, well, hold so on, hold hot on. Is that it, he's itchy? Is it? I think I think the vulture used the mild itching beam <laughs> before the. I mean, it's like a combo beam. It's like, like a an one itchy, two punch. A, it, you itch, and then the car explodes into two cars. <laughs> <laughs> that explosion this is so amazing. Car explosion <laughs> is everything. It is. <laughs> oh it would be an unacceptable flip book. <laughs> <laughs> if your kid brought this to you as a flip book, you'd be like, "You can do better than that, man. You're seven now. You're seven. Oh, I, this, all the parts just basically land where they started. There's more cars in the explosion than there were at the end. And th this is an explosion that has lost its will to go on. <laughs> this is Brian if he was an explosion. Yep. Yeah. Just I just go straight to the giant firebomb magic. Why the itching? Th Force push. <laughs> Mild itching first. <laughs> So stupid. Oh, Jesus. The credits were still rolling at the bottom of the screen, and I had nine pages of notes at this point. So now we cut to the wailing that we were talking about in the intro, at least the first bit of wailing. Um, there are, I shit you not, I counted 22 people seated side by side on a porch, and they're all crying. Well, they're not all crying. There's like two people really carrying all the crying weight in this yeah. scene, but there's a lot of crying coming out of these folks. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and the bad guys are watching on like a magic mirror. And synced mm -hmm. up laughing at all the people crying. And, and they yeah. nailed it, by the way, this time. This yeah. time, yeah, just, no. <laughs> they like got together, did a six week laughing workshop with a guy in Paris. And then they just <laughs> made first take Marlon Brando. <laughs> they got a metronome. Yeah. Nailed. <laughs> and this is the scene I was talking about, also, where, like, again, everyone in this scene is wearing a different weird hat. You just have to imagine that people showed up and were like, oh, fuck, I was going with giant purple Dr. Seuss stocking cap and now you I gotta do a different thing. Is anybody is anybody here doing big yellow bowler? Okay, Nobody I have okay. currently living fox juggling. <laughs> All right? <laughs> That's mine now. How many balls? <laughs> no, no. Any you, kind I, of I was doing gonna do five. No. Nope. Uh, only if he do does pins. A, if he does nope. pins, it's different. That's stupid. A fox juggling pins? <laughs> yeah. Doesn't make any sense. They're too small. How would people be able to see them? <laughs> this is why we have meetings. <laughs> and um, <laughs> so as they're watching, as the uh, evil brothers are watching all the crying, Superman turns to Steve and he says, I feel like doing something, Steve. And I'm like, that's definitely gay sex. But no, it's straight sex. Yeah. He's, he's going to finally magic rape Rose. Not After consensual. four movies. Yeah, no, we've spent four movies with him going like, well, if I sell my iPad to get enough money, maybe she'll fuck me. And and his brother the whole time is going like, why don't you just use the force push, bro? You can force push her clothes right off and then rape her a lot. And so now he finally takes that good advice. And, and when right. he says it, his brother goes, that's my guy. And I just want to say, that's my guy is the weirdest response you can have to someone deciding to finally hypnosis rape somebody. I'm just saying. <laughs> What's an appropriate response to that? <laughs> Cut it He's out, asking Heath. for a friend. Cut it out. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the line we get next is call her from the Cadwin of Monus. <laughs> is, do you have an, any idea what that was? Not a clue. The magic TV? Not a clue. <laughs> uh, but immediately after that, an Astro Smash projectile hits her in the tits, so she becomes zombified and starts walking towards him. Mm -hmm. 
All right, somebody out there knows what Astro Smash is and knows exactly what I'm going for. That's the exact visual. Anyway, so a much yeah. less usable form of Astro Glide <laughs> <laughs> from Noah's times. <laughs> Astro Smash. Buy it in a gas station bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> it's for guys. <laughs> So Steve gives his brother some quick magic rape advice and then they cackle together some more. And then Rose shows up all submissive and magic. Mm -hmm. And I love how romantically they play this moment, you know, where he picks her up and carries her across the threshold to magic rape her. <laughs> yeah. this, this movie didn't want to like to overplay the whole rape through magic hypnosis thing. You know, they wanted to show the positive sides of it. <laughs> Yes. And they end this scene with, um, I don't even know how to describe this kiss. Oh, uh, I thought he ate the side of her face. I, <laughs> was it a kiss? It was much, a lot more like a zombie move, yeah. See, I was going to go with, imagine like a super passionate kiss from a movie, but the actors miss and don't <laughs> care. <laughs> just keep going it's yes like, i want to stand with you guys missed fuck it <laughs> on the mountain. it's as much of that song as we can use and <laughs> fuck you sound garden try and take my money <laughs> and now we cut to somebody being tormented by vultures yeah um, now this has been a running theme and i don't think i really realized this until this film but for whatever reason, no one can keep their pants on while they're under magic vulture Why are attack. His pants open. Was he fucking the vulture? <laughs> and it went bad, or or is the natural reaction to vulture attacks to to take your penis out? I like, think so. Peacocking, so to you, speak. Yeah, you scare them. It's like a bear. How you try to get bigger? Oh, they with, with a vulture. You're like, no, look, I have a dick, and they're like, oh. I, <laughs> it seems to me, Eli, that someone gave you that advice and you followed. It. Well, I have shown um, my dick to a lot of vultures. I have, <laughs> that's the wrong way to behave. I don't want to be right. <laughs> well, you know, you haven't been laser attacked by any of them. So I guess I can't really argue with your logic here. And this is we've gotten a lot of vulture attacks in this movie. This might be my favorite one here. I mean, obviously, it's no floating chair, um, but. So first the vulture comes in and pecks out his eyes. Mm -hmm. And then he turns him to dust and then into a laser hockey puck. Right. We're and, just getting started, folks. Yeah. And then his neighbor comes out and he's like, hey, someone getting blinded and turned into a laser hockey puck out here. <laughs> and a skeleton runs on screen like. Someone doing their tech in a high school play and yeah. throws the laser disc that used to be the guy at the guy who's come out to check it out. And now he is also blind. And <laughs> then very quickly after turns to dust. If it, the eye thing feels unnecessary. Yeah, right. They're just disappearing, these people. They're blind for half a second first. I don't know. Right. If there's a theme we've found in the last month or so, it's that. The movies we watch tend to <laughs> not skip steps they need to skip. <laughs> that may be the theme over yeah, the last like, 87 movies combined. Like editing, for example. Yeah. <laughs> steps like or that. Or sound, yeah. Um, and uh, by the way, I believe those were the other two rapists from the beginning of the last movie. I think that's what that was. That was like the vultures taking out Quinn's last two rapists. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it was just two people. I don't know. This was, uh, and, and I have to point this out. We were, this is 10 minutes and 32 seconds into the movie. This is when my Nintendo Switch arrived. Okay. We were recording this a week in advance because Eli's out. This is where it arrived. And I had our, the Zelda game came the day before. So I was really ready for it. My wife came in. She just held the box out, like, you know, like just kind of around the corner or whatever. And I'm like, fuck. And I watched the rest of this movie instead of playing fucking Zelda for you people. No, I want has everyone. three notes for the rest of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> and Black it's like, people I know say another and do thing. Silly things. <laughs> <laughs> you get it, Riff. You're putting these goddamn chickens on here on purpose. You're just trying to tease me. Yeah. So, and, and then we cut to Quinn chilling in her dorm room, doing her makeup, mm -hmm. and her roommate shows up crying over the blinded laser dust 
explosion skeletons. And Quinn could not be <laughs> less casual. She's like, one of our, two of our classmates were murdered and their body parts were scattered all over. And she's like, uh-huh. <laughs> uh, well, they're going to be dead forever. So I have a Cinnabon to get to before it closes. Six to eight, they cut the prices in half. <laughs> yeah, so she gives him a quick like, yeah, sorry about them dead guys. I really gotta gotta be some anyway. So and, and her roommate asks her, you know, like you're I know you didn't like those guys and they tried to rape you and everything, but you are gonna go to the memorial for them, aren't you? And she's like, Oh, you know, ha they, like half price from six to eight. Uh <laughs> I don't know if I made that clear. She's, to she's you. like making the I don't want to have lunch with you, but you want to have lunch with me excuses. Like, oh my God, yes. It has been so long. Ah, text me. Do you still have my number? It's six is the first one. And you know the rest. You, yeah, you'll figure Facebook it out from me. there. Fa Facebook me. I can What's ignore that. What's the easiest that. thing to ignore? Mail me, a letter. Mail me a letter. Mail me a Google invite. And then I... We'll get back to you. So busy. I've got a recording that day. How many shows do you do a week? Eight. <laughs> so if you didn't want to go to lunch, whatever. You like. <laughs> Want to go to Mamoons and get a hope. It would have been good. <laughs> Delicious. He did mail that Google invite, by the way. <laughs> so now we're going to cut to Cornell West's underfunded clone dancing crazily in the street for the next 27 minutes. Oof. Yelling all the math terms the writers knew about. Yeah. And I just, I want to point out that the only way that you can tell that this is his crazy ramblings and not just the dialogue of this movie is because he doesn't have his pants properly fastened. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like that's like this movie's code for crazy because they need to give you a fucking code. Right. Exactly. I, I, we all have at some point in our notes for this scene. This dialogue is different than the rest of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Harder to easier to. It is. It is crazier. <laughs> the closest to making sense anyone ever got. I'm like, yeah, you could conquer the sun with enough plastic made of dinosaur heads. Yeah, no, that makes <laughs> More sense than most of this film. Honestly, though, this is like A plus acting in this <laughs> I, like, effort grade. Effort grade A plus. Like he is going for it. It's fantastic. Oh, yes. Yes. He's going for an Oscar on this one. That's Nigerian Oscar, people. I wasn't How racist. Dare you? How and dare you? <laughs> you yeah, know, I would have to say this is probably the best acting we've seen in this film so far. But while he's running around being insane, and talking about how he's going to conquer the sun, Quinn and her uh, roommate walk by and see him being all insane. And the roommate has the most bizarre reaction because she's like, whoever did this to him will never have peace. Like, he's got, he's mentally ill. <laughs> that's not a did this. I mean, in this movie, yes, yeah, someone did that. Too, but normally, that's not a culprit kind of thing. Yeah. But not in Nigeria. In Nigeria, you like follow footprints back to a wizard. <laughs> I guess so. From the closest crazy person. <laughs> Do you guys speak Nigerian? I didn't get any of this scene. I have nothing. Keith, it's because you take notes yeah, on no, your own sheet. You got to read Noah's notes. That's what I do. I read <laughs> Noah's notes back 30 seconds. Yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> so, at least we can all agree at the end of it. Even if we, nobody understands that we can pretend well. Yeah. Textual criticism for Cultures <laughs> of Horror. Oh, if you awesome. stack Noah up like 400 <laughs> times, he is 400 he, pounds. He's he's. <laughs> He's God. Yeah, no, clearly. Um, so, uh, yeah. Did so, the episode come out yet? None yes, yeah. No, I was, yeah. I was thinking that myself. I'm like, is that a call forward or a call? No, that's a callback. That's a callback. That was last we week's show. The only it. timeline that matters is mine. <laughs> <laughs> no, you nailed that one. You nailed it. So now we're going to cut to Rose and Superman post-coitus. Oh, I wanted 25 minutes of awkward sticky dick conversation. Just like, <laughs> oh, I'm going to jump in the shower. Oh, you're going to shower? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to shower. Got my... Do you want a tissue? No. No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bathe. I'm going to bathe <laughs> instead of wiping off 
gross. On also. <laughs> on, I'm, yeah, I'm right, smearing. Right. You want me to smear cum on me? <laughs> All right. Now I'm going to shower. But now I'll have little fibers from the tissue. No, that'll be much better. That'll be. It'll look like I was trying to shave. Like a savage. Yeah. No, I don't want a washcloth. No, fine. <laughs> I have access to running water 100% of the time. Lucky me. Go all in on this. I feel a lot guiltier saying that when we're doing a Nigerian movie. But yeah. <laughs> Oh, they're very clearly air drying. Let's not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, so they've been crazy fucking apparently. And now she wants to marry him. And he seems okay with that. I mean, that was the plan the whole time. And it's it's super casual. She's like, I would like to marry you. He's like, yeah, okay. I'll marry you. Um, I'm going to go to the fridge. You want like a yogurt? <laughs> I got Chobani. <laughs> no, no, he doesn't. <laughs> so, yeah, no, that's actually it. He's like, yeah, no, I'll marry you. I'll be back in a minute. I'm going to run into the living room and not be with you now. Right. Uh, and, and this is where his we find, we come across his brother eating. Now, I should point out that in this movie, when people eat, first of all, it's always with a spoon. Well, like a ladle. An yeah. enormous <laughs> yeah, ladle. Right. And they're always eating some weird sloppy, like the shit from the Matrix. You 100% know, like, Oliver Gruel. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. They live on a completely gruel diet there, apparently. Tasty wheat. <laughs> yeah, I that's exactly. it. Exactly. Uh, and he, he has that like, ugh, she always wants to Fuck. And he's like, literally, you used magic powers to make this happen. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> tired. <laughs> tired. Eventually, you want to play Zelda. I'm just saying. <laughs> I mean, fucking is great. It's not that I don't love you and want to sleep with you, but the fucking the Zora people, the dam is going to break. It's and twice. flood the Zora kingdom. It's twice. Everybody needs twice and then take care of yourself. Okay. Yeah, Get exactly. It exactly. Get out of here. All right. It's like the first time I took Viagra and after like twice, I'm just like, okay, is there an un, an <laughs> un, like, is there a Thorazine for this? Well, now what? I have a place for the towels. <laughs> right. All right. Hibbidi Is there a spell for chafing? <laughs> Hibbidi Lubi Ija. No. Hibbidi no. Jibbidi uh, Can we just talk straight? Oh, really slows things down. I'm thinking of a thing going on a picnic. <laughs> hibbidi Jibbidi no. It starts with a Hibbidi Jibbidi Jibbidi. <laughs> Um, so yeah. And yeah, so the, the, but the dialogue they hear, have here basically is him saying like, she wants sex every second. I can't handle it anymore. Um, and I sure wish I had won her of her own free will and, but not that bad. Cause then after the scene is over, he goes back to fuck Rose some more. And does this strike anyone else as the buddy who won't go down on the girlfriend problem? Like I've had this conversation a couple times in my life where the guy's just like, yeah, man, day and night. And I'm like, really day and night. <laughs> you sure you're not bad? Because, <laughs> because you know, if you get it done, day and night not really a thing. He's like, I don't know what you're talking about, and they're like, oh, you don't know what I'm talking about. They yeah, need a minute. Yeah, yeah. They, they they really only need a minute. That's true. <laughs> Do you need a tic tac? No. Yeah, so you're, doing you're doing this wrong. You're doing this wrong. So now we cut over to... One of us is doing this wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's me. So, <laughs> so now we cut over to Rotfoot Lady from the bodega getting Rotfoot treatment. Ugh. Just when I couldn't get more aroused. <laughs> <laughs> and I love this. They have a dedicated foot washing cinder block for glue foot. Oh, like, <laughs> that, That's something they have. Almost everything in this movie is a legitimate source of white guilt. And can we point out that there is a very audible goat in the background <laughs> of is. this entire scene? The entire scene, it's like my sister, meh, <laughs> meh. It's like neighbors having a, a fight that you want to ignore. Meh, 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 meh. And they're just like, don't, don't engage. You don't want to be a part of that drama. <laughs> meh. <laughs> So, be a man. <laughs> so now, so okay, so and and as the daughter or something is fixing the rot foot lady's foot or whatever on the dedicated rot foot cinder block. Well, you don't want your your glue foot touching the grass because that would be gross. So you have the glue foot block. Everything in Nigeria is like kids playing, but they don't have all this stuff. You know, no, this will be a desk. 
Yes. We'll use this is that this will be a desk. <laughs> so, it, yeah, but they're talking about Rose and what the hell happened to her because apparently when she went off on this fuck fest, she didn't leave a note for anybody, so they haven't seen her in two days. Right. And so she puts a curse on whoever killed her <laughs> son and stole Rose. Well, right. Now, again, in this movie, this is really what happened. But if you take that out of it for a second, this woman had a foot ailment. Her son died in a car accident and her daughter went off to fuck some dude and didn't tell anybody about it. Therefore, witches. Mm -hmm. Right. Hmm. Terrifying outside of this movie. Right. And so she sends the the younger girl that's that's helping her with her foot off to go find Rose and see what happens. But of course, we can't. And this scene until we see what she does with the foot washing tub. It's put it away, by the way. I was very grateful with that, by the way. Just like tied up that loose end. <laughs> they, they, like, she's like, literally, she has to walk off camera right. But first she takes the thing up on the porch and then sets it up and pours the water. And we watch her do all of that. Just some improv. I really wanted her to just like casually start gluing construction paper with her foot together and make some marks and crafts. <laughs> And then she uh, plot talks for like another five minutes. Yeah, well, once Dee Dee leaves, the, the younger girl, the, the rotfoot lady has to like direct address the camera about how she's going to kill the person that killed her son and gave her rot foot. She will kill the fuck out of that person. So now the non-foot lady, Dee Dee, from the last scene is walking down wild chicken road. Chicken fight! <laughs> Look, I have no idea what goes on in this scene. I watched it seven times. Never for the characters in the foreground. No. There is a full Oedipian. I don't know if that's a word. There's a full Oed Greek. Oedipal. There's a full Oedipal drama going on in the back. The chicken <laughs> runs into its father on the road and slays it, <laughs> marries its mother. Watch. Look, I don't, you don't have to watch all of the Vultures movies, but watch <laughs> the nine act Wagner opera entirely done by chickens going on in the background. It's fantastic. Yeah. And there, there's, it's so diverse. There's so many types of chickens. It's like a college brochure of chicken diversity having a bar fight in the background. A big parade. They're all dressed in like hipster clothes and shit. I, like, I, honestly, I was expecting Kendall Jenner to hand a Pepsi to a rooster at some point. <laughs> I was just expecting a link to run through and pick one up. I, my, my mind was on one thing at this point. Yeah. Holy shit. Okay. So in the foreground of the chicken fight, which is, again, this that's the scene. This is just background shit, the dialogue between these two characters. But I, I wanted to write this down. This is the kind of dialogue we get in this movie. Okay. So Dee Dee runs into Rose's dad as she's walking over to find out where Rose is. This isn't exactly what we get. It's actually more monotonous than this. But this is the kind of dialogue we get. I don't know where she is. You don't know where she is. I was going to check on her because I don't know where she is. I don't know where she is. You two don't know where she is. I thought she was with you. Then where is she? I don't know. Let me hit you. I wasn't ready for you guys to start doing the check. I made it all the way through my notes. You gotta remember the important part of the scene is the chicken fighting. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly, exactly. But yeah, that was the dialogue that mattered. Yeah. There is five minutes of them saying the exact same thing. We don't know where Rose is in slightly different sentences. <laughs> Just, we don't know where Rose is. We are unaware of Rose's location. <laughs> Rose's whereabouts? No, we not. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> chicken idol going on in the background that was memories from <laughs> as done by a chicken <laughs> I've been working on that I've been waiting for the opportunity to use that for so long warming up in front of Anna moment. two three four <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hope the audience enjoys this as much as I do otherwise this show sucks <laughs> All right. So, but the the key on this one is that like after several days of no one being able to find Rose, finally someone's like, you know what? Why don't we call her phone? I, I yep. mean, I saw how many numbers there are in Nigerian phone numbers, so I can see why you would be hesitant. But they try that, but her phone is switched off, so that doesn't help. Yeah. And now one of the elders is asking someone else about 
Rose. I, apparently, they didn't feel <laughs> they had hammered home the no one knows where Rose is under current to this episode oh, man. with that big ambiguous scene that we just had with the chickens. Or maybe they just expected, you know, people are going to really be paying attention to the chickens. They're going to have no fucking idea what that and last they were was right. about. They were right. <laughs> they obviously watched dailies and they were like, guys, we just made the best movie of all time. It's about chickens. It's 45 <laughs> seconds long. <laughs> but we got to get people back in on our plot. <laughs> yeah. Right. So few people know where Rose is, though. So yeah. few. <laughs> there is one moment of this scene, though, where he, uh, the elder guy, when the girl walks away and says, no one know where Rose is, he goes, I have never even heard of a kidnapping. And I wrote in my notes, really? Guy who lives in Nigeria? You yeah, right. <laughs> heard of a kidnapping? Okay. Okay. <laughs> you never, never heard of a kidnapping. <laughs> And then he sits there to eat his fucking tasty wheat mm -hmm. uh, while she wanders off. And meanwhile, Superman and Rose have paused the fuck fest long enough for him to feed her. In, so, in bed, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. However, if you're picturing sexy bed food like strawberries dipped in chocolate, mm. you should stop. No. It's <laughs> the exact uh, he's he's shoveling like a KFC famous bowl into her face like he's powering a steam engine. It's not attractive. It's amazing. By the way, this is now two out of two scenes. These characters are doing things that people think they want but don't. Nonstop fuck sessions and feeding each other. <laughs> Anyone who's ever tried to feed another person is like, you do it. What are you, a fucking baby? Just eat it. Eat, eat and I'll eat. No, stop. Get, get away from me. I just realized having something forced into my mouth is actually not fun. <laughs> Speak for yourself. Um, yeah. And, and so she she has never enjoyed herself more than this and wants him to hasten the formal marriage rights. It's a weird burst of vocabulary. It really was. <laughs> and he says he responds to this by saying, oh, that's the most wonderful thing I've heard all year. <laughs> Are you sure year was the time span you were looking for there, bro? Let's go back to not fucking in this not even twin bed. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody name a span of time. Anyone in the crowd? A span of time. <laughs> Day, year, <laughs> microsecond. Uh, I heard year. I heard year. It's the longest and one. And a profession. Vulture <laughs> rapist. All right. <laughs> We've got a movie. This movie is coming together. <laughs> <laughs> and now we cut to the elders, and, and one of the dudes is weeping because since no one can find Rose, they assume she's dead. And they broke out their silliest hats. For oh this my scene. god, <laughs> silliest hats! It's so, so they're all wearing and props. They're, yeah, yeah, one right. Everyone's got a power a, up. Yeah, one of them's got a <laughs> skateboard in his hand. <laughs> the other guy's got his feather again. <laughs> yeah, and all the hats in this one are like they're hats you'd buy for a newborn baby, but <laughs> full size people. <laughs> right. A, a newborn baby not in a country by the equator. Like winter yeah, right. hats for newborn babies. They all this, have. This is from the hats your boss wears to tell you he's wacky at the Christmas party collection. <laughs> 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 right. Huh? You guys having a good time? You want some drink tickets? Huh? I love the opening <laughs> line here, too, because, like, the guy, the, the, the father, Rose's father says, What do you mean she's dead? And I wanted somebody to go, like, I, I'm not Obi Wan Kenobi, motherfucker. I mean, she's not alive anymore. <laughs> That's what those words mean. But she's not. It's just you know, it's Africa. No one's seen her in 36 hours. So you know, <laughs> they assume apparently. Yeah. If if in Africa you are gone for two days, you are dead. <laughs> apparently, yeah. And Kwame's there too. Now, normally when we see the village elders, they don't have him there. Kwame's there, and he's kind of going like, "Nah, you know what? Are you, we get to do daughters die time to time. It's just it's a thing. Let's, These things let's happen. move on." Seems like you uh, you've really been monopolizing the conversation for the last <laughs> several minutes about this subject. So. You're not even going to ask about my day. <laughs> <laughs> the other guy goes like, "I'm very sorry, brother. So I will." Pat you on the back with my weird cow fan now as a symbol of how sympathetic I am. Yeah. And by the way, they've decided she's she's dead, right? Mm -hmm. Just yeah. like like in this town, gone for two days equals definitely murder rape dead. Yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah. yeah, clearly. Well, I mean, I don't know. This father's never even heard of kidnapping, but you know, apparently someone has. And I also want to point out, like, Superman is Rose's ex boyfriend, right? Like when her boyfriend 
present boyfriend died and she disappeared. No one thought to ask the ex-boyfriend if he'd seen her? Yeah, this movie's cast is all the people who think Adnan didn't do it. <laughs> no, no, it was a serial killer who maybe walked through Maine once. <laughs> so nice on the phone. Could have been. You're all stupid. Maybe he was eaten by dogs. <laughs> <laughs> That also isn't a call forward. Well done. You guys are killing this. I'm, I'm just not referencing that any other episodes today because I'm so fucked up in that. These troubles stupid. And then, <laughs> and then we go back to Superman and apparently he's done with all this Rose fucking. Uh, the anticipation was was greater than the reality. So he releases her from the magic spell. And he says, time to go, bitch. I've had enough of you, which... I, I think is the first swear we've had in the movie and was very abrupt. Yeah. Because the last two scenes, he's been like, oh, she wants so much sex all the time. Yeah, I'll marry you. And I was like, all right, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Those are the words of a roofie canceling spell. Yes, I mean, yes, that's, exactly. I time like to go, bitch. thematically Just... consistent. I love it. Yeah, the opening of the spell is hibbity bibbity bibbity jibbi ija but the closing of the spell is, all right, get the fuck out of here now. And then after he tells her to go away, we watch her get dressed for a uncomfortably long time. <laughs> for like 10 minutes, just like, ugh, fucking sweatpants. <laughs> <laughs> a white ass day. Looking for a sock. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's in the sheets. It's in the sheets. Oh my God, look in the fucking sheets. <laughs> It's always in the sheets. It's in the sheets. It's in the sheets. Look in the sheets. Please look in the sheets. Unless I didn't <laughs> unless I didn't use a washcloth, in which case you're just not gonna find it, so stop looking. Um and then she she walks into town until that Astro Smash projectile leaves her, and then she says, basically direct to camera, where am I coming from? I don't know where I am. So <laughs> Yeah. It's like, my butthole is licked sparkling clean. <laughs> what have I been up to? <laughs> yep. And uh, so she shows up at dad's house, right? Yeah. Her uh, dad's house. And dad, he like can't believe she's real. He is, she's been gone for two days. And he just, he pokes her right in the booby. <laughs> like <laughs> awkwardly. Like she has to move his hand away. Like the Brant from the back. Like, excuse me. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Don't improvise groping me. Thank you. <laughs> And her immediate reaction was, wait, did I miss him being buried? Did I miss him being buried? It was like, did she, did she give him a necklace to hold? What is the <laughs> fascination of the burial? Yeah, I, I, I'm sure it's a cultural thing or, well, I'm guessing. Who the fuck knows? Maybe they just made it up as they went. But yeah, and also, like, I love the fact that her dad's reaction, she's been gone for two days, y'all. That's not even that much of a bender. Her dad's reaction is, are you a ghost? He has to touch her to make sure she's not a ghost of herself because she's been gone for almost 48 hours now. Right. He's like, yeah, you can check for ghost on my shoulder or like my... <laughs> and high five. <laughs> so you have a ghost vagina? No, there's no reason. <laughs> no, you, you I value your friendship. <laughs> So, yeah, but she can't remember where she was and uh, and he's very upset and sad or whatever. And and now we cut to the next scene where it's her and her friend, Dee, Dee the girl that was looking for her earlier. And I wrote in my notes immediately as this scene started, I was like, hundred bucks says this scene contains no new information from the last one. I would win that hundred bucks. By you the way. would. Although the two <laughs> characters do figure out that if she doesn't remember where she was and she was, in fact, gone for four days. She was probably under a magic spell. I mean, Occam's razor, you know? Well, obviously, <laughs> yes. Yeah, also, there's this this line in the scene, and I went back, and I'm almost certain this is what actually was said, because at the funeral, she just wandered off because the Astro Smash projectile hit her in the tit it, at the funeral. So she just wanders off, and her friend Dee Dee says, the last time I saw you, you walked away from the funeral like someone who is going to ease herself. I must know what that means. Does that mean masturbate? Hmm. That's what I would mean. This is why we need to call that number. <laughs> <laughs> I have a series of questions, some of them from Twitter. <laughs> yeah, but apparently nobody's buying this I don't know where I was shit from her, except unless she was under some mystical trance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so the next scene is them talking about what kind of mystical trance she might have been on. Oh, for fuck's sake. So, 
Yeah, th- and this time it's it's Rose's dad talking one of uh, uh, to one of the other elders about the thing they were talking about in the last scene again. Yeah, yeah. the only thing of note that I noted in this scene was that. Rose's dad, one of the village elders, is so clearly not wearing any underwear underneath his robe thing. Yeah, no, no. He was he was swinging freely there. But also I love because he's like, uh, perhaps she was under an evil magic spell. You know, the other option is she wanted to fuck some dude and didn't want to tell you guys. But yeah, but the other guy, the other elder is like, obviously, no. Yeah, definitely evil, mystical hypnotism magic. Can't think of anything else that would cause your hot daughter to be gone for a couple of days and not tell you what she had been doing. Yep. Yeah. Better, <laughs> better go to the priest for a cleansing. <laughs> yeah, that's, and that's their oh fucking God. response. We, we get some bad advice compared to other movies on our show. Yeah, right right. <laughs> he's like, first things first. Uh, and dad's like, rape kit? And he's like, no, no, no. no, no, no. no. Ha- have, the, have the priest check for evil charms in her aura. Check <laughs> Check for Jesus after. But I want it to be treated like a rape kit, like it gets lost and you got to pay for it yourself. And then cops take you into basement. You just got to dig through other demon kits to get in. <laughs> Finally, you bring it. It's inadmissible because you opened it accidentally. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> you got to sue the demon in civil court. <laughs> Your jokes are so depressing. I mean, they're funny, but they're so depressing. Um, yeah, it's like Ryan Braun in the steroid scandal. Very similar. <laughs> and then, of course, this scene also has to end with someone directly addressing the camera and saying, when I find out who magic raped my daughter, I will kill the fuck out of that person. Except really high pitched. He does it really high pitched. He sure I can't does. even. I smoke too much to imitate that. So with that weird combination of high pitched and foreboding, we'll take a quick break. But before we do, let me give act three the hard sell here. Will Rose's father get the revenge he seeks? Will this episode ever contain the main character? Will that bodega lady eventually stop wailing about her goddamn foot? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the suddenly over conclusion of Revenge of the Vultures. Disc one. Hi, welcome to Generic Bank. Please don't sue us. How can I help you today? Yeah, um, I'm looking for a loan. Oh, okay. I'm sure we can hook you up with that. And what is the purpose of the loan? Um, razors. Sorry, what? Yeah, got to shave the old noggin. Some razors. Oh, really? I thought you were just... Um... Uh, you would be wrong. This is a choice. A great choice. Really? Yep, really. Wow. What about the top of your head? Because it looks different in the way that it... Uh, it looks of... like I did an extra great job up there. Yeah, thanks. I appreciate that. That's what you're going to okay. say? Okay, yeah. Well, sir, why not just try Dollar Shave Club? Huh, what's Dollar Shave Club? Dollar Shave Club is the smarter choice. Get a great shave at a great price, conveniently delivered right to your door. No need to buy a cheap disposable razor that'll give you a cheap shave or spend a fortune on razors with gimmicky shaving tech you didn't need. You mean I don't need a razor with an eighth blade where my thumb goes? No, you do not. Okay, but but I'm trying to save money. This has to cost a fortune, right? Actually, for a limited time, new members get their first month of the executive razor with a tube of their Dr. Carver's shave butter for only $5 with free shipping. Really? What's Dr. Carver's shave butter? It's the best shaving cream you've never tried, and it's transparent for a more precise shave, which helps prevent ingrown hairs and fights razor bumps. Great. So I don't have to guess where my face is. You don't. Fantastic. Okay. But what about... After the first month. After that, razors are just a few bucks a month. In your first month box, you get an awesome weighty handle, a full cassette of four cartridges, and a tube of their shave butter. After your first month, replacement cartridges ship automatically at the regular price. There are no hidden fees and no commitments. Cancel anytime you like. Okay, you sold me. How do I sign up? Join the club today at dollarshaveclub.com slash godawful. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash godawful. All right, so I guess I won't be needing that loan after all. I guess. Or maybe get one anyway for, like, hats. I'm not bald. You're bald. Dollar Shave Club, the smarter choice. Especially (laughs) if you're bald. (laughs) Are you lonely? Looking for some fun? Then call the Vultures of Horror Sex Line. Where all of your fantasies come true. 
because of bird magic. What am I wearing? Face paint and only face paint. Ooh, I can see you in my mirror now. Now I'm blowing up your boyfriend's car. Call now and talk to Hot Vulture near you. Look, if I don't become community chief, nobody will. Oh, who um, who, who are you talking to? Yeah, just, we're just over then. here. Uh, nobody, nobody. I'm just saying, nobody will. Yeah, okay, but see right here. Who are you looking at? It's just like you're looking out, but we're over here. No, I'm not nothing. I'm looking at nothing. Or am I? I? I can absolutely see you. You're not looking uh, yeah, at us. Me too, and, and hear you as well. Well, you can? Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, cheers. <laughs> <laughs> and once again, none of us remembered an important thing we had during the interstitial break, so we're back for more of this shit. And we're going to start off this scene with what I can only describe as an outtake from the Ministry of Silly Walks sketch. Oh, another 25 <laughs> minutes of a guy being slightly different than the rest of this movie, which means he's crazy. Well, you can tell by the pants. <laughs> uh, yeah, and the fact that he decorated himself like a homeless-themed Christmas tree. I feel like that was indicative. <laughs> Otherwise, what we know is the Rockefeller Center Christmas tree. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I gotta say, the insane people in this movie seem to be the only ones having any fun. I used to pay a lot of money to feel like this guy feels right now. Mm-hmm. By the way, in the background of this scene, there is very clearly a car failing to navigate a dirt road. It's a good time if you want to follow that. Not as good as Chicken Fight, but as no. far as background goes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we peaked early on that, but yeah. Okay, yeah. So quick question about this crazy guy. If I asked you guys before the movie started, will somebody finger their own butt and smell it? What would you have said? I, pro- I, I would have gone with Probably. In the movie okay. or as a part of our cast? Either one. <laughs> oh, in that case, definitely. Okay, I don't well, know and 100%. It's... Correct. You guys are both correct. I don't know yeah. and get out of my room. <laughs> <laughs> and Okay, so this is this is Mr. Lucky. This this particular vulture-vified, crazified person is Mr. Lucky, who is going to be the village chief, even though Kwame really wanted to be village chief, until Kwame cursed him with vulture magic to make him pantsless crazy. And I just want to point out that like when they see him versus his voice, if anyone ever makes a sound balancing TV, I will be the first human to buy that. I will line up like those Chinese people for iPhones. I mean it. I've spent so much of my life desperately adjusting the volume of Christian movies, depending on the character speaking. You have a customer. I'm just saying (laughs) you have at least two customers. Yeah. Yeah, and so, and, and I also love, too, that for just a second, you have this, like, are these two people part of the movie or not <laughs> moment? Absolutely. Oh, the people walking by the other direction? <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. And they are? Are they? Well, yeah, yeah, they're two they of the village elders, but at first it's just like, oh, yeah, I guess you couldn't, like, close off the road there, could you? <laughs> but- <laughs> no, yeah, okay, yeah. Right, they talk for a second. The uh, They're just two two other elders? Yeah, yeah, okay? uh-huh. Yeah, and they're trying to decide since since Mr. Lucky obviously can't be the community chief now, who's going to take the job? And they decide on Injinyakutu just because they wanted me to have to spell that. <laughs> and by the way, by the way, my spell check seems to think I got it right. It 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 has no problem at all with Injinyakutu the way I wrote it. To be fair, that's just because you share Google Docs with me and I've tried to write the words in yes and no in the same (laughs) sentence. So they're just like, yeah, no, I get it. Eli's typing in green today. (laughs) Noah's green in our notes. Yes, I am. (laughs) Eli's normally blue. Behind the curtain there. I made Heath pink, but he changed it to red the first day. So now he's red. (laughs) So now Cecil's pink. (laughs) So that's not how it happened. uh, (laughs) And by the way, apparently Injinyakutu is Kojo, is 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 Mini LeBron, Wutu, the, the main character. Yeah. Who is alternately is Wutu, he the main Kuju, character? Kojo, and Injinyakutu. I mean, he's the only thing we have that's remotely close to a protagonist. He's all we have left to hold on to. <laughs> Give me this. 
I like the new elder guy that we just met. He looks like a like a jazz trumpet player in medieval times. He's got a cool <laughs> hat. He's the best hat so far. That's and that's some stiff competition. Holy shit! So yeah, they decide that like since Injinyakwudu was the uh, runner up for village chief, they they should give the job to him. But first, they have to have a meeting of the elders. So the next scene is the meeting of the elders that they were talking about at the end of the last scene. But Kwame is late. <laughs> And they communicate this by having the other characters sit around waiting for him in silence for a solid three minutes before yes! he runs over and is like, sorry, I am late. And uh, pro tip, you do not have to show people waiting. You can just no! start right with I am late. We'll, we'll puzzle it out. We'll figure it out. We'll, we'll retrofit the them waiting. No, but we just see them literally just moving their mouths with no audio for like five minutes. <laughs> yeah, right. Finally, Kwame is like, sorry, sorry, I'm late. Uh, but I brought a microphone, so <laughs> we can start. The microphone could only follow one of them, I guess. Yeah, but my first note on this was, do they know the cameras are rolling? They can't know the cameras are rolling, can they? <laughs> Jesus. So Kwame shows up, and they, they're going to have this meeting about who should be village chief. Mm -hmm. Um, of course, and Kwame's wanted to be village chief ever since he was a baby, apparently. But they're going to pick his brother, Wutu, and they Indian Kushball. Yes, <laughs> that's does he yeah, sound you like that, that or are you right describing too? visually what? You think he looks like? <laughs> but Kwame Both. is pissed. Yeah, and Kwame's response to this is to go, "No, we need a man with a lion heart, a man who's." Great, a man who's strong, and I'm like, are you gonna say you? And he's like, yeah, me. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I also love that. Apparently, when they were trying to figure out who could be the village chief of this shithole uh, city, the bazillionaire philanthropist that single handedly funds the entire town was their second choice. Well, it's based on hats, and he has oh, not yet worn a hat in this movie. No, so. no, yeah, exactly. Well, he's he's and quite Mr. Deficient. Lucky had like an email thing with a server. Like I understand. <laughs> <laughs> I also love. Okay, I'm pretty sure this is the words that are actually being used here. When they spend a few minutes telling Kwame about how much more awesome his brother is than him, and he says that is arid nonsense. That's what I wrote too. I was like, like a desert. Arid? Is it desert nonsense? <laughs> I started to doubt the definition of arid myself. I was like, I feel like it means dry. <laughs> yeah, so that was some arid nonsense. And that's where he goes off about how you need a man of military strength with lion hands. I'm, you don't, and a giant cock too, huh? Yeah. Right. Um, and, and, they, and they say, you know, like... Uh, Oh, uh, we would never make you chief, Kwame. You can only be community chief over my dead vulture lasered body. And, and then Kwame gets extra mad and he start, he throws out an ultimatum. He goes, if I don't become community chief, and, and then he turns to the camera like, like he's Brett Favre and doesn't know how it works. <laughs> if I don't become chief, nobody will, staring right at the camera. Yeah. 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 Diabetes. <laughs> Camera guys, I'm not in the movie. To? I'm not in the movie, dude. <laughs> what movie? You are now, my friend. You are now. <laughs> so we, it, now we go to Kwame's wife and his his kids chilling at the house. Oh, uh -huh. and everyone in this like pre-talking part is doing all the things wrong. She's sewing like she's handing the needle to a ghost in between each <laughs> stitch. <laughs> The card game they're playing appears to be place your cards in the center and then it will be over. This, oh my, it's clearly not a game. They're just doing meaningless motions. With Why can't one of these movies just play cards or chess or something real that just you, figure it out? If they have cards there, you've got to imagine they also have card games. Also, apparently, I, I know we've mentioned this before, but apparently in this house, they have at least one Chakra Kiki tour poster in each room. And we have zero. <laughs> <laughs> the office looks naked without it yeah um but this is where he has to come in and tell everybody the terrible news that kujo wutu injanya kutu is is going to be the village chief not him and everyone's very upset despite the fact that we've been through this before folks yes this conversation has happened in every vultures film this is the fifth film with equal amounts of surprise and outrage yeah, that that he's not going to be village chief. Yes. So it's about the same damn thing. 
Yeah, but Steve is willing to fight for his dad to make him village chief. So they're going to do that. So now we get to Kwame lying awake at night, thinking about it like a me after a Twitter fight. Just like, and then <laughs> what you don't know is this. <laughs> at. <laughs> Yeah, and his VO is just explaining the last two scenes in more details than I have in my notes. Yeah, it's very clear that he was like, look, the last scene was good, but I think we need it explained with visuals of my weird flabby tits descending into my <laughs> armpits. Can we do that? Can we make that happen? <laughs> and they can. Yep, they did. Lucky us. And during his voiceover, by the way, at one point he's talking about his brother and he goes, I may have to stink him. Yep. Stink him in a way that he will have nothing in him at all to attract the people. Like like an upper decker. No, I a, say, him with an upper decker. Oh, see, I was thinking a, a Hitler. I, I assumed it involved <laughs> chocolate covered pretzels. Uh, how does how does Hitler fit in? It's it's, oh, it's, get... it's it's the Jewish version of the upper decker. Really? No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> It's, you're getting ready for the record, so you put your finger in your butt, and then when they're asleep, you put it right below their nose, so they look like Hitler. But then they smell shit, and they're like, where's all that shit? And they don't know it's them. <laughs> you got to do that with people who will think it's funny. <laughs> Still try to find one of those yep. people, but I will oh, eventually. Oh, for a lot. <laughs> oh, for a lot. <laughs> Also, by, by the way, one of my favorite parts of the scene, Kwame's wife is right next to him. She's supposed to be asleep, uh -huh. but she won't stop moving. <laughs> no. she's, like, she's like doing improv. Like she might as well be uh, like steering with a steering wheel in bed for no reason. It's so stupid. And then she wakes up to the sound of his inner monologue. Yes. Yep. She's like, well, yes. what did you say? He's like, I said that. Sound okay, it's fine. We'll just start talking regular. <laughs> Yeah, and, and also, like, when she wakes up to his voiceover, he must then repeat to her all the stuff he just said in his voiceover. Oh, and then she gives him a quick evil pep talk, and they go back to bed. And now, 45 minutes into this show, we check in on the main character. Who is getting ready to close a $500 million deal. Well, yeah. they're considering it. They don't know if they want the $500 million deal that they're deciding. Literally, there are not $500 million on that continent. Not <laughs> 500. Well, okay. We all want to pretend there's $500 million deals just going free in Nigeria. No. No. Why not just say $895 trillion? Yeah. Like, just <laughs> yeah, might as well. And But, of course, first they need to raise $10 million. You know how $500 million deals work. You first, you have to raise the first $10 million. What, What's going did Like, Did the Prince of America send them an email? <laughs> what the fuck's happening? <laughs> you have to raise $10 million first to get the five. I feel right, like this plan is craps. Like, does anyone else really yes. feel like this plan is craps based on the odds and the needing to raise the money? Like, if they, if it cut over to, like, a, a craps table and he's just like, mm? So, okay. It's pretty good odds. I mean, it's better than you get. Better no, yeah, yeah, certainly better than, a single like, number. ladder or whatever. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, and also, okay, so the guys, he brings his two assistants in and he's like, you know, I want to make this decision, but I feel like two heads are better than one. Now, first of all, it's three heads. You're, you're, are you just counting the heads you can see, bro? But secondly, both of his assistants disagree with his assessment of this, and he still goes ahead and does it. So what was the point of bringing them in? Yeah, he's like, yeah, and I mean, we'll put up the entire company to the bank, and they're like, oh, no, do not do that. That's a terrible idea. And he's like, you are negative Nancys. <laughs> Basically, it's every company meeting with me, Heath, Andrew, and Noah. It's like me, look, we buy an elephant. They don't need him at the circus anymore. We write god-awful movies on the side. Stop hanging up on me. I can tell everyone's <laughs> muted me. I can tell when you guys have muted. Also, he, okay, so he's like, or they're like, who would lend us this $10 million? He goes, well, I found a bank, but we'll need to put the company's assets up as collateral. To which bum, we, bum, yes, literally, we get the organ strike to that collateral. You get super fast zoom in on one dude's face. <laughs> Psycho. <laughs> so weird. <laughs> and I love, too, how, and this is constantly throughout this movie, this has been a theme of it, but how vague every business thing in this series has been. 
you know, they, they refer to this as the business deal. Yeah. And not, not even the Schwartz deal or the Fourth Avenue deal or it's just the business deal. And and then in the next scene, we go to Cujo with his with his wife recapping the previous scene. She apparently also doesn't agree with this idea. So it's four heads that he's going to ignore. Right. And she explains to him that he's labored for 10 years to build this company to be the company it is today, which is a, a company business. I wanted yes. someone to run in, point a gun in her head, say what this, say what it does, say what the company does. <laughs> they make seals with village <laughs> elder hats. <laughs> no, that's a $500 million industry. Okay. All right. right. That would make sense. To which his counterpoint is, you are not thinking $500 million is a lot of money. And I'm like, yeah, that's true. That $500 yeah. million dollars <laughs> is a lot of money. He, he explains what that means. Like, he tr like imagine a stack of dollar bills that's like 2 million inches high. <laughs> <laughs> 2 million inches. <laughs> well, yeah, because that was clearly her problem with it was that she had not yet realized 500 million was a large number of dollars. Um, but yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, so, but he ignores her and he's just like pissed off. He's like, why is everyone wondering what will happen if the business fails? And like, well, everyone's livelihood will disappear. Then is probably why they're considering that heavily. And then I get to write hibbity boo, hibbity boo, bop. Yeah. As the dialogue cue for the next scene. Um, I hate to correct you while we're recording. Hibbity boo, hibbity boo. Yeah. Mm. Mm, yeah. No, be, yeah. <laughs> Mm. To, the lyric, to the tune of Mbop, by the way. Yes. Vultures. Oh, just vultures with that blonde hair that covers their eyes. You're not quite sure if wanting to fuck those vultures makes you gay. And they grow up and they're they're guys. You're sure. Like, yeah. You're sure. You know. That makes me gay. <laughs> but you're kind of okay with it. And then no. you realize how young they were when you wanted to fuck them, and you're like, ooh, that's a whole new thing. Oh. <laughs> it's like the Olsen twins, but for gay, not pedophiles. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Well, but gay, but also We're talking pedophiles. full house Olsen twins, Sub right? Set. Full Sub <laughs> <laughs> oh, are you getting judgy now? You're getting judgy? Me and Heath were on the same page. <laughs> you got it, dude. <laughs> I was on page 12 of the notes here, so I'm going to go back to that. Classic liberal. So... <laughs> So now in, in this scene, okay, so we're going to open up on them doing some more magic and they've got the evil white face marks going. So, you know, shit's going down for this. Mm -hmm. um, and he, during Kwame's spell, he's got his, his sons out there. He's doing this spell and he puts out a little African folk wisdom. He says, a man who brings in firewood infected with insects invites lizards for lunch. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what? I wanted a flash cut to lizards coming over with a pot roast, just like, hey, oh my God, your home is beautiful. <laughs> what the fuck was that? Oh, I would have loved to hear more proverbs from this guy, too. Yeah, just right. keep saying them. Two, two wrongs don't make glass house. Uh, I don't know. Look, we're going to sew all of these onto a pillow, and they are available at our store. <laughs> if you would like your a man who brings home firewood infected lizards with invites lizards for lunch pillow, <laughs> patreon.com. Yeah, Nigerian folk wisdom is uh, also all a legitimate source of white guilt. By the way, was this not disappointing to you guys that Kwame was not holding his face in his hand you, with fire coming out of his neck? Yeah. I feel like that's, I mean, whatever spell he's going to do here is going to suck. Like, that's how you do a real spell. Yeah, I mean, he did, he did that just for, like, the kid who took the balloon. You would have thought, yeah. But now, they're, they're, what they're doing now is vulture cursing Kuju. Um, for, and he starts the curse out by saying, you know, how dare you keep giving money to people and making them feel so poor? So... Yeah, classic conservative, and they're gonna <laughs> and they're gonna take all his easels. What? Is it, is, that's the curse, right? I they're think gonna, that's <laughs> the flock yep. of vultures is gonna fly by a bunch of easels in their talons, and <laughs> now they'll never paint for for a minute <laughs> yeah, until they get another until easel. They get more easels. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> so, but okay, so but here's how their curse is gonna go. They want to kill him, but first they have to reduce his fortune to zero. And then he'll have to die, but mysteriously. 
Mysteriously. It's got to be mysterious. He adds that at the end. And all of them, at this point in the spell, all of them get purple vulture power-ups. So they I believe do. they can take direct hits for like the next 90 seconds. Mm-hmm. Oh, you mean, you mean the 8-bit ducks from Duck Hunt that fly <laughs> into their chests? Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> that was it, yeah. Oh. Wouldn't it be great if they just got flying tackled by an 8-bit dog at the same time? <laughs> Always would be great in all movies at all times. Yeah. And not movies. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I love to, okay, so at the end of the curse, he goes, you know, could you die now? And I'm like, not now. What about the wealth being reduced to zero? You just said the vultures are confused now. They don't know. You have to be clear with your vulture instructions, bro. <laughs> they fly back just holding the easels. What are we doing, man? <laughs> this seems stupid. Like This like, code we... is a fucking mess. This code's a mess. <laughs> <laughs> what is this, Python? Because <laughs> it's Africa. Python's very intuitive, whatever. Yeah, we don't have pythons <laughs> there, but yeah. Um, and, and Just like we... a really emotionally aware snake. <laughs> <laughs> like, what's going on? I can tell you're being upset, Heath. <laughs> Heath, talk to me. Don't Name do a different this. animal that I look like besides <laughs> snake. No, can we? <laughs> can we move on? So and, and and then we Ow, did you throw coffee at me? <laughs> <laughs> You're a mean snake. Jesus. And then we cut over to, to Kuju in his office getting vulture flame laser. Well, we assume vulture flame. We we just see the flame laser. Right. And he has like a, a heart attack. Yeah. And and then his secretary comes in, finds him passed out on his chair, and takes an extraordinary long time to realize this is a bad thing. Yeah, she's poking at him like, hey. <laughs> Hey, 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 for like 10 minutes before she's like, oh, right, heart attack. Yeah, and then she just screams like an idiot when she finally realizes she doesn't call anyone or anything. And her two assistants come in. Okay, now they've got to carry him down to the car. They are <laughs> so bad at carrying. <laughs> it's like me and Eli trying to take a love seat upstairs. I expected at any, one, at any moment for one guy to go, no, you turn your side towards me, towards Pivot. me. Pivot. You can't say left. <laughs> Who's left? Mine? Yeah. Pivot. <laughs> <laughs> so they they bumble his ass out and they... It's like a bus boy who tried to take too much, yes. but it's a person. Yes. So it's like a bus boy tried to bust too many dead bodies. <laughs> and then they they take him to this sad and terrifying little Nigerian hospital. Not a hospital. Absolutely not. <laughs> yeah, they take not. not a hospital. I had school nurse's office or courthouse. <laughs> Could have equally been either. And also, just to give you an idea how bad this is, they bring him in on a, let's call it gurney. It's a buffet table. It's a buffet <laughs> it's table. It's a wheeled buffet table. <laughs> and when they bring him into the door, they have to lift him up to get the gurney over the door. They don't have inclined plane yet. Oh, they've they got have to three fucking butter him to get him in the door. They like <laughs> slam his head. It's like airplane. They slam his head. They turn him the other side. Slam his head on the other side of the door. <laughs> they literally have to like pick his arm up and move it to get him to go through the door. It's fucking All right, hilarious. Hold on. Let's let's put like ten logs under him and we'll roll him <laughs> and we'll roll him in. It'll be like the pyramids. Shit. And then we head over to the uh, to the wine and juice box store that Kuja's wife runs. It's about time. I, I mean, we need to know what happened with the sales at this lady's juice <laughs> store. <laughs> right. right. They, I mean, they teased us with it last time. And yeah. now again, maybe. Oh. Also, I just want to point out this movie tempted Noah by having the exact same theme music as Zelda for this scene. It they were just like, <laughs> gotcha. It's just vultures. More yes. vultures. <laughs> <laughs> All those chickens are real chickens, too. Yeah, yeah. And so she's talking, you know, to her friends about how amazing Kuju is, which is what everyone does about him in this movie, uh, which she gets a call from the secretary and she has to run to the hospital. So now we, we, we head over to this hospital and this is a hospital that you could only imagine an American citizen in if like the CIA was afraid they'd over tortured him and needed him revived. Yeah. Let's go with benefit of the doubt and say the people who made this movie don't know how hospitals work, but I'm going to say this is the foremost hospital in Nigeria, and they just like got the room for a day. It might be, yeah. Everyone's just like eyeing the stethoscope like it's gold. <laughs> and so we watched this doctor examine him for like several silent minutes, and again, like guys, the guy's like shoving the 
stethoscope up his ass going, I don't really know how any of this goes. So Cough. after <laughs> <laughs> So after five minutes of that, the doctor turns to everyone and he goes, Yeah, he'll, he'll be fine. He'll be fine. Yep. That's the whole diagnosis. I wanted them all to leave. Oh, all right, let's go. Seems like he's being a real drama queen. <laughs> His ass beat is fine. I don't know what we're <laughs> fucking worried about. But no, his wife comes running in and yells questions at his unconscious body for <laughs> somewhat like 20 minutes. <laughs> what happened to you? Why are you ignoring me? What animals is our friend Kwame like? <laughs> <laughs> I love to. She goes like, um, she turns to the doctor. She's like, please don't let anything happen to my husband. He's all I have. And the other guy's like, don't you have two kids? You know what I mean? I don't. Get it. I don't know what you I actually mean by that. Yeah, and of course, my notes here are simply: there are three minutes left, and then I get to play Zelda. <laughs> it was important to me. So then we cut to the same place we already were, but later for a scene that could have taken place immediately after, but didn't for some reason. And this is where the doctor, who said he'll be fine forty seconds ago, says. Uh, He's getting worse. Probably shouldn't have rushed into that whole he'll be fine thing. He has high blood pressure, mm -hmm. diabetes. That's bad. And blood cancer. Yeah, what? <laughs> blood cancer. But he can't have candy bars. I mean, is what we're yeah, saying. Yeah, exactly. I love that. Like, well, he's got blood cancer, also high blood pressure. So we're going to watch his cholesterol. No. Seems no. like blood, blood cancer would be good by itself. Yeah. <laughs> you you want to be extra thorough? Maybe Ebola, second cancer, uh, <laughs> hypertension. Yeah, exactly. Mild hypertension. Cut out red meat and malformed blood cells. <laughs> so, and add radiation. Yeah, exactly. That's the key. And also, by the way, I can't just bypass the fact that the doctor in this scene is dressed like somebody that Shaft doesn't want to bring in, but he will if he won't tell him where Big E took the congressman's daughter, you know. <laughs> I, like and, and that's how fucked up this movie is. We almost missed that. Anyway, yeah, so she, he, the Dodger takes her outside to tell him he's got all the diseases they could think of. Uh, but before he says that, though, it, like it, it, he just says, your husband's case is very complicated. And, is, and on complicated, we get the same collateral dun, 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 organ strike that we got earlier. Complicated. Yeah, not sure the people who made this movie know what that word means. <laughs> so, yeah, also I love, like, after he says, he gives him the diabetes, high blood pressure, and leukemia diagnosis, he says, there's also a lot of other diseases in his blood system, medically, doctor. <laughs> yeah. And, of course, like everyone in this movie, the wife doesn't understand how a person can be healthy and then later... Not, not be, be healthy. Yeah. So it's impossible. <laughs> makes no sense. And of course, then she pleads with him. She's like, Doctor, please cure my husband even more than you usually cure people. And mine is the most important husband. Right. And he's like, Oh, okay. Now I'll do everything. Now I yeah. didn't realize you wanted me to do everything in my powers. Yeah, sure. <laughs> well, if you and strenuously then, uh, object. Insert disc two. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, that that's it. That's where the movie's going to end. It's going to leave us on a cliffhanger. And, and I guess the cliffhanger in this sense is, how does that sentence end? <laughs> <laughs> and I guess since I already recycled previous Vultures intro stuff, I suppose I can get away with recycling previous Vultures outro stuff, too, and simply ask for your predictions about what the next installment will bring. Well, we better find out about that juice enterprise, the suspense. <laughs> like, how does that, their sales? Their... I want to know about the beauty passion. I was thinking the same damn thing. Yeah, exactly, exactly. What if there's a tie-in? What if the beauty pageant one round is how much juice can you sell? Oh, mm. shit. Oh, yeah. shit. I think there's a whole other series. And in an effort to maintain that reputation we have for cultural sensitivity here at God Awful Movies, I guess we can wrap up with this. What was the worst thing to ever happen in Nigeria that was still better than this movie? Uh, Boko Haram is a job creator. <laughs> Probably a few more jobs than this movie. The World Cup. <laughs> <laughs> they must have gotten it once, right? I don't think so. I don't think so, no. Racists. <laughs>
<laughs> and well, that does it for our review of Revenge of the Vultures Disc 1. That's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to bring you back out of hiding again next week. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. Burning Hell. This is going to be our live show from ReasonCon. Yeah, yeah. So the Footless Thomas will be there for an Estes. Per we have finally, I've been wanting to revisit Estes for so long. I have said to Eli so many times, are we going to do Burning Hell this time? Are we going to do Burning Hell? <laughs> He's like, no, no, I'm saving that one. I'm waiting until I have a very Lyme disease ridden audience to work exactly. with. Exactly. And I want to remind everybody that at the time of this recording, this we're recording about a week early, but at the time of the recording, there are still tickets available at ReasonCon. Check the show notes. They may have sold out by now, kind of hoping that we still got a couple of tickets if you want to show up. Um, but like I said, I'll have it linked on the show notes for the episode. So with all that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 87 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help us a ton by leaving us a five-star review on iTunes and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist and The Skeptic Crowd, available on iTunes, Stitcher, and wherever else podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Drafts on Mars, and all other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions, promising to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. Mr. Lucky became homeless and went on to buy his wife a wedding band at Zales. At Res OKC on Twitter, originally recommended we do these movies, and I will never be able to thank them enough. The doctor stopped fucking around and really got to doctoring now. Noah eventually did get to play Zelda. Awesome! And it was But for that one mm. robot sneezing, that was really good. That was pretty quiet. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four, four five, five, six, six seven, seven, eight, eight nine, nine, ten. ten. <laughs> six was funny as that. <laughs> six right. is a funny number. I love that after this long of doing it, even the 10 count, we can't just, we don't even just, yeah, no, this, like, we, we're, we're, we, we, once, once, once we turn it on, it can't be turned off. God damn it. That's right. All right, here we go. <clears throat> we all became Asian by the end. You became Asian. <laughs> you, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, you took a solid turn into China. <laughs> I said multiple racisms in every skit, guys. Come on. Okay, I thought that was really fucking funny. <laughs> and then in the next scene uh, I was drinking water <laughs> <laughs> The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm LLC Copyright 2017, all rights reserved Welcome to Mafia A new podcast telling stories of America's criminal underworld Gotti assumed the position of head of the Gambino family And using the name Donnie Brasco I was able to infiltrate the uh, Bonanno uh, crime family in New York City Bugsy Siegel is an American mob legend. One man changed the whole texture and landscape of crime in America. Listen to Mafia every Wednesday on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your favorite shows.